Cyclone Neville finally roars into life on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 20th. It finally did it. Cyclone Neville has been named by the Bureau of Meteorology. It was 18S and we were wondering for what feels like weeks whether the damn thing would actually form or not. Well it has. It's a tropical storm and looks like it's strengthening quite rapidly. We're code blue right now, mainly for the remnants of Megan over the Northern Territory of Australia. A slightly janky graphics today because our usual imagery provider is out of action. 72 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins. No areas of interest to remark upon. Just the frontal system moving across the uh, West Central Atlantic. 55 days until the Eastern Pacific hurricane season begins and the uh, tropics here are also very quiet indeed. Uh, just a few slight little bits of uh, activity down in the equatorial reaches, the intertropical convergence zone. The Western Pacific also looking rather quiet as well, just a small disturbance uh, trailing across the equator there as well, south of Micronesia. The rest of the basin looking rather clear indeed. The North Indian Ocean, the tropics looking quite quiet, but some thunderstorms over India and Bangladesh. Cyclone Neville moving westwards and the remnants of Megan also doing that over Australia. Um, and we'll be catching up on both of those storms properly, properly, properly in a moment. Neville already up to at least 50 miles per hour and looks like it's strengthening very quickly. We've also marked a 10% area of interest here in the southwest Indian Ocean off the coast of Madagascar that could form next week uh, some possibilities that we might see another system over in this area near Madagascar. And in the South Pacific, nothing to remark upon. The tropics also looking rather quiet here right now. So overall, the tropics are looking generally quiet uh, with no real land threats apart from Megan and what's left of it. So let's check in on Neville. It isn't a threat to land as I just established, but it is 705 kilometers from Exmouth, 742 from Barrow Island, 768 from Onslow, 774 from Coral Bay and 885 from Christmas Island. They're moving westwards, so obviously moving away from Western Australia and will track just slightly closer to Christmas Island, but not very much. It's moving west-southwest and won't be a threat to any other land areas uh, over the next, uh, well, throughout its whole life from this point forward. Not too much else to say on that. Let's check the satellite imagery, which will do most of the talking, I think. When you look at Neville on the left-hand side, it looks like a bona fide, uh, mature hurricane strength storm. But there are some caveats to that. Uh, earlier on, only about 10 hours ago, there was an ASCAT pass that only caught 35 mile per hour winds. And the image, the, the appearance has obviously improved substantially. And so we're giving it a 50 miles per hour, potentially conservative. Uh, and it could well be on the, its way to reaching hurricane equivalent status there. Certainly the imagery vouches for it. Looking at the water vapor imagery there as well, looking decent and a sign of rapid intensification. You get one of those massive convective flare ups trailing around the whole central area of the storm. You know, untrained eyes, you could call this a category two on the Sapphire Simpson scale, at least looking at that imagery, uh, but it's still got a way to go when we put it in context to what we've had so far. You can get storms that exhibit eye features without being a hurricane strength cyclone. And it's, that's just the upper levels. Uh, obviously, uh, we're not sure what's going down the low levels, but the microwave looking good there as well as we watch that progress. No doubt it's strengthening a lot right now. Well, here's what's left of Megan, and it's looking pretty appalling. Uh, we've given it remnant low status uh, because obviously there's no convection there now. And you'd be forgiven for thinking that there's no rotation either, but there is still a low level rotation in Megan. You might be able to see little bits of it from the radar, but it's not very conducive, uh, not very conclusive, I should say. Uh, but you can see it rotating around the top end. But the microwave imagery does show that the central area there is still rotating decently, and I reckon there's still a low level circulation still quite apparent there. 
Looking into a few other places right now, a chilly night across the United States and off the coast there, that uh, significant frontal system. And this is looking at Japan region, a uh, big little... Uh, big little a uh, big system there non-tropical of course producing lots of rainfall and along the coast of India a, lo a long streak of uh, cloud and thunderstorms there along that eastern coast of uh, Odisha and northwards into West Bengal and beyond sea surface temperatures look like this in the eastern Pacific well they've recovered slightly in the equatorial zone but still that's significant anomaly in the Atlantic those temperatures starting to warm up as well the uh, Gulf uh, starting to warm up a little bit with the uh, eddy that ends up in there as well and the Western Pacific also looking decent with temperatures up to 28 degrees extending north of the Philippine Islands now and shooting for Taiwan. North Indian Ocean uh, those temperatures really getting warmer now up the coast of the Bay of Bengal uh, decent there absolutely especially along the eastern coast of India and off to the west as well Arabian Sea still some catching up to do further north that's typical for the time of year Southwest Indian Ocean looking very good between Madagascar and uh, Mozambique in the Mozambique Channel temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius and that system that could form off the east uh, briefly or they'll get 30 degrees Celsius as well Western Australia still looking decent, but a little bit cooler on uh, where uh, 18S slash Neville has been. And in the Gulf of Carpentaria, still piping hot even after Megan, over 30 degrees Celsius. The South Pacific, one or two cool spots actually now, south of Vanuatu. But near Fiji, those temperatures still looking good. And the Northern Islands of Vanuatu, also very warm SSTs, 30 degrees plus. And these are the anomalies across the world right now. Oranges are above average, blues are below average for the time of year, of course. The Indian Ocean, generally above average. Uh, one or two cool spots, particularly around Australia, but as we've seen, those temperatures aren't that bad. And in the South Pacific, it's quite a bit above average as well, just waiting for another storm there too, you feel. And in the Atlantic, of course, very much above average as we count down to hurricane season over there. In the South Pacific, oceanic key content still looking very good in a few areas, including the Coral Sea, so definitely be on watch for potentially more activity. The North Pacific still looking decent as well and continuing to get better. The Western Pacific uh, in those tropical zones, uh, getting into those greens and yellow zones now, which is pretty good on the oceanic key content and even one or two spots in the East Pack. Well, not a massive amount to look at on the computer models today. This is the short range showing, of course, Neville moving on towards the west there, probably reaching Category 2 status on the Zaffir Simpson scale. The Bureau of Meteorology currently forecasting a Category 2 within three days on the Australian scale. And there it is moving westwards at first and then more pronounced towards the southwest as we get towards the early next week probably or late this week and then it actually runs itself out as it enters those cooler waters further south so it really doesn't affect anyone sea surface temperatures sorry uh rainfall expectations why do I keep doing that? Rainfall expectations for the Madagascar region, well they really spike up towards the end of the seven day period in anticipation of this possible tropical cyclone. Uh, I can't remember exactly where the Seychelles are within all of that, but it could be quite close by. Maximums there as that system stalls at first. 29 inches of rainfall, that's a very large number. Uh, that's over 700 uh, millimeters. And for Mauritius and Reunion as well, 8 inches possibly there for Mauritius within 7 days. That's uh, 3, uh, 200 millimetres. And some isolated high amounts along the coast of Madagascar as well. You'll see why in just a second. But those are the rainfall expectations across that region. Well, in the longer range, this is why. This cyclone starts to form. The GFS is very confident about it already. Towards the end of the month, 27th, 28th of March, and there it is, spinning towards Mauritius, getting very close by as a probably Category 2 hurricane equivalent there as well. Very small system, so Mauritius doesn't get huge winds from that, but it does make quite a close pass. Slots between Mauritius and Rodrigues. Moving southeastwards, um, and if that does occur, then obviously we'll be on high alert for that, but still very speculative at this point, only 10%. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can check out all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. 
and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt is still waiting to be worn and Hone is still well we've worn out that name haven't we continuing into the silly range then we see what else happens with that cyclone this is actually the only thing that we're watching on the whole model suite in the next 16 days so it dies off very quickly actually moving southwards into april but it's looking like we're in for a relatively quiet spell in the next two weeks if the gfs model is anything to go by the only thing happening after neville is this 10 percent system but that's mainly due to the time range it's un very uncertain uh, but that percentage could rise as we go through the next few days so stay tuned well on this day we had a proper cyclone landfall on march 20th 2006 it actually made landfall late on the 19th as a category 4 by this point it had weakened slightly to category 3 as it was moving inland of course cyclone larry a very well-known storm although some might argue it was eclipsed just a few weeks later by the omnipotent monica Moving westwards inland, it made a very powerful landfall along the coast not far from Cairns and it was a local disaster. Cyclone Wattie was also active as a tropical storm further out to sea over the Coal Sea not far from Vanuatu. Moving westwards. So the first name on the Atlantic naming list this year is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific it's Letter, and in the Central Pacific our next name is still Hone as it has been for five years. 12 storms so far this year around the world. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Iwinya, and in the North Indian Ocean, the next name now is Rimal. Just want to point out, we've just started work, finally, on the Atlantic, what might have been for 2023, and that should be premiering probably around Easter weekend. In the Australian region, the next name now is Olga. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Gamane, and in the South Pacific, it's still Peter. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow.